Since your time in Hollywood, what, 2006, when have you been your most broke? <laughs> um, when I first got here. Um, I actually slept in my car one night when I first got here. Um, I stayed with my brother for a while and his girlfriend at the time was tired of me being there. And so they were like, you gotta get out. And so I slept in my car one night or two. And then I ended up staying with another friend for a while. Um, in the beginning, yeah. I, uh, I've always been decent with saving money. I've been lucky in that way. So it didn't take long for me to get a job waiting tables and start saving up and stuff. Um, but I've never been like $50,000 in credit card debt, um, except for making the movie. So, I mean, that was probably our brokest point was after we made the movie, probably that's the truth of it. Uh, Cause we had $40,000 in credit card debt. And at that point I had already saved up. I saved up 15 grand to put into the movie. So I already put my, all my savings into the movie and we had 40 grand of credit card debt. So that was probably my brokest point is after we made the movie. Um, but you know, it, that, it was, I never, I never second guessed it once and I was proud and happy to do it, so. So you slept in your car. Do you remember uh, what street, what town that was? That's interesting. Uh, where was I? I think I was in El Segundo. Oh, okay. um, that's, I live down in South Bay now in Redondo Beach and uh, I ended up sleeping in my car that first night. I had all my stuff in it too. It was pretty crowded. Um, but I was 23 at the time, so you could almost get away with it. Nowadays, I think I'd be like, Ugh, wake up, you know. <laughs> Once you hit your early 30s, you're, you're not quite the same anymore. But um, yeah, that was, that was my hardest time in LA and not knowing anybody other than my brother. You know, when I first moved here, I had no friends. I didn't know anybody. And, uh, and eventually you start kind of getting a family, you know, I, I was lucky I, I did acting school and so every, you're, you're surrounded by people that are going through the exact same thing that you're going through starting out in LA and, um, and so you, you kind of become a family, you know, and, and so you get new friends that way and, you know, all kinds of ways and it becomes, it becomes your family here in Los Angeles and I'm sure a lot of people have the same feeling when they come to LA, they kind of start a, a, a new family in a way. Because uh, a lot of people come here not knowing anybody. One of the common themes you've talked about is um, things not going as planned. Yeah. My sense is you like to plan, you like to be organized, is that right? I very much do. I, I don't understand. Um, I was helping a friend recently plan a, a movie shoot and uh, he has all these things handwritten on a paper. And I'm like, all right, well, let's type it out on the computer and get every single location and the address on, on, a, on a page and every single actor. and you know, every location we're going to shoot, what time of day. And it's like, why are we doing this? And I'm like, what do you mean, why are we doing this? Like, you have all the information in your brain, but you're going to have a crew of, you know, 15 people, maybe more, maybe less. But these people, they have to know what you're thinking and you can't always be the one telling them. It's very easy to hand all this information so everybody already has it all. And when they forget it, they just look at the piece of paper. You know, you have to save that time. So, no, everything's about organization with the whole thing. And um, you have to organize to the last detail because when you get there on the day, it's not going to go how you planned. And there's always problems that arise. With Wally Got Wasted, there was so many different problems that arise. I mean, for one, certain locations we couldn't afford permits. You know, certain places we had permits, certain places we didn't. Um, we got shut down one day, you know, other days I'd convince security guards and police officers to let us keep shooting, you know, and uh, all while he got wasted, um, <clears throat> for starters, I convinced the crew from Teen Wolf, the TV show, to come over on my movie, so it was like all the same people who had worked together previously, I'm the new guy as the boss, you know what I mean, so that was a really interesting dynamic, but they want nothing to do with cops or security guards. Like if they're a union crew, so if they, you know, if they get any, see a cop or a security guard, they're just stop working. They don't want anything to do with them. They want no trouble, no nothing. So it's on me to fix those problems. So I might be acting in the scene and a security guard comes up and I'm like finishing the take real quick and then turn and, and take care of my, my problem over here and, and then hopefully convince them and then come back and do my take or, or direct or whatever I'm doing at the time. So, and the only place we got shut down actually was my apartment, which is the funniest thing ever. Um, there was one day we got shut down in my apartment and uh, basically 
the the scene it's the iconic scene in the movie actually the first time they bring the body out in public and it's a slow motion scene and they're walking with the body and actually if you look at patrick who um plays mitch in the movie he looks left in the slow motion scene and he's looking at a woman who's screaming at us going where's your permit i'm gonna shut you down and that's why he's looking left but it's in slow motion you barely you know, you have no idea what he's looking at. He just glances left. That's who he's looking at. Some woman screaming at us, telling us, you know, where's your permit? And so I managed to get that take done. And then I went up to the woman and was like, hey, I'm so sorry. Did somebody bother you? Are we bothering you? How can I help you? She was like, I want to see your permit. And I was like, okay, well, um, I just sent somebody to go get the permit. So why don't we just, um, I'm going to shoot one more and then, and then you know, and then I'll, I'm sure somebody will be back to show you the permit. And she's like, I need to see it now. I'm calling the cops. And she has the phone right there. And I'm like, okay, I try my best. You know, so I, I was like, guys, we're shutting it down. Everybody wanted to kill her. You know, the crew, they just set up all these giant lights and everything, the cast. And uh, I was like, don't talk to her. Don't bother her. Because I fully know that we have to come back there three days later at that date and shoot with cops and fake guns and all these I can't have the cops be called now, but how the heck am I gonna shoot here in three days? So I'm like, no one to speak to her, just leave her alone. And then one of my actors said to her, it was so funny, while James Babson, who plays Wally, does a phenomenal job. He goes, way to destroy art. You know, and he passes her, which is just so funny to me because we're making like a, a silly comedy movie. But, um, and then, Actually, when we came back there three days later, she did end up calling the cops. And uh, luckily, she didn't do it in the daytime. So there's a scene in the movie where some dirty cops shoot somebody. And um, that was in the daytime. And luckily, we're between the two buildings and no one called the cops because if a cop came up and saw us with fake guns and police uniforms, they probably would have shut us down. But <clears throat> cops didn't get there till nighttime. And uh, we saw the cop come and he posts up about, I don't know, 50 yards from my apartment on the street, just parks there and just watches. And luckily at that point we were shooting all the SUV car scenes. So we, would, we brought this SUV between the two buildings and we set up all the lights on the hood pointing inward and the cameras on, uh, attached to the hood of the car. And how are we gonna leave? The cops right there, we can't drive around with this stuff on there and nobody should do that. I'm not encouraging anyone to do this at all, you should get a tow truck and, and not drive a car with lights pointing at your face and a camera. But we, we had to do what we had to do at that moment. Um, and so basically, we, I, I got out of the car, I turned off all the lights, I turned off the camera, and luckily there's no street light right outside of my apartment. So when we pulled out, you could only see the headlights of the car. And I turned left away from the cop and we would drive down the street and then I'd get out and turn out all the, on all the lights and turn on the camera. And then we would just drive slowly on these residential roads and shoot the scenes. So, or park in a parking lot and shoot the scenes if you couldn't see out the windows. So that's what we did. And then we'd come back after 30, 40 minutes of shooting and drive past the, not past the cop, but close enough that he could see us, but there was no street light, so he couldn't, see, I, I'm assuming he, could, he couldn't see the camera on the hood and the, and the lights. And uh, we managed to get away with the whole thing. So my luck coming into play once again. So, and then other days, um, you know, like we, we shot at a casino and, uh, and we had no business being at the casino. We didn't have permits, but I'm showing up with a, a, a you know, three ton grip truck and, and a crew of 15, 20 people. They, the nice part is we're so big that people assume we must have permission to be there because there's no way you would come and try to shoot there without permission. And uh, we're shooting at the, the parking lot of the casino and the two security guards come up and they're like, um, it was like a scene out of Superbad. They're like, do, where's your permit, guys? Where's your, do you guys have a permit? You know, and my friend David Lee, who was helping with the movie, goes, yeah, we have a permit. And then they laugh and they go, because <laughs> if you don't, we don't give a shit. <laughs> and they laughed and then they left. They didn't end up even looking at trying to look at a permit. So it was, again, luck came into play there. And um, <clears throat> another place, um, a security, the head of security came, and he came at the absolute wrong time that, um, because we were running next to something, and it was slightly dangerous what we were doing, and it should have never been done in the first place, but I was looking at the footage, um, uh, focused on the camera, and the first AD 
was trying to get more footage and she was she was like yeah ron run ronald quigley was in the movie one of my actors uh, who, uh, who plays a dirty cop run next to that moving object you know and he did and it's not really safe to do that and then the head of security comes up right as he's doing that it's like the worst possible time he could come and and he was like whoa whoa what are you guys doing here like this is not safe uh you need a permit to be here and it took like 20 30 minutes to talk to him and convince him to let us stay there um and at the beginning he was totally against it but i was like i saved up this is my life savings like i saved up all my money and this is i'm shooting a big youtube video uh, because the moment you say a feature, they assume you have money. So I just told them it was a YouTube video and um, you can't shut me down and da 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 da. And you just, please, please, please. And eventually, after 20 minutes of hearing me sob and, and talk, you know, and be sweet and nice, because I was never mean to him, he said, fine, you can shoot, but don't, uh, don't shoot there. Shoot, you know, you can shoot on the stairs, which is like, doesn't make any sense to me. You can shoot on the stairs in the parking lot. Well, luckily in scheduling, I knew the hardest place would shoot would be where most of the pedestrians were. So we shot that first. And that's where he said you couldn't shoot anymore. Well, I already had all the footage I needed up there. So, and only one more take I needed up there. I figured we'd do it last now that we got shut down. And we shot the stairs in the parking lot next. And so I scheduled just perfect, knowing that we had so much time. And when you show up with a crew that I showed up with, you usually have some time if you start shooting right away before people shut you down because they're wondering what you're doing there and they don't come up and shut you down right away. And I actually had a defense for that because the crew sees a security guard or a cop, they immediately don't do anything. So I would ha sometimes I would just go up to a cop or a security guard and be like, hey, how you doing? Are you having a good night? Yeah? When do you get off? Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, have a great night, you know, and I would just walk away. I would just make small talk and walk away and the crew would see me talk to the security guard or the cop and be like, oh, okay, he squared everything away, we're good. When really, in fact, I just talked to him about their day and, and was friendly. But see, after I'm friendly too, they assume I must be there because people that don't, they're not supposed to be with her, they, they shy away, they act like they're being sneaky. No, I just come up completely, confront you, be super nice and walk away. So they'd be like, oh, do you know about this? They'd ask probably their so, other security guard, do you know this movie shooting here? Like, <laughs> well, let's call the boss, you know, and like, and they'd call maybe their boss and they don't know and then they call their boss well meanwhile i already had an hour and a half to shoot so i got some footage and so that's a lot of part of the scheduling is like you, you have to try to think of those kind of problems and, and solve them so um yeah that, that was and sometimes cops would just be like oh we saw you shooting a movie if i have a lot of uh, important equipment we're just keeping an eye on you and they would just watch us but uh i wasn't in hollywood i was in south bay so or I was in Pasadena or somewhere where, you know, the cops, if you do it in Hollywood, you probably are going to get shut down. And some places you definitely do get shut down. I don't encourage people not to have a permit, you know, but we had to take the chance because we just didn't have the money. So, you know, mm -hmm. we'd go for it. <laughs>